Hello and welcome to a brand new series on F1 2021. This is the driver career mode and we're going to be with Alpine F1 partner in Fernando Alonso, the two-time world champion. I'm Joe if you're new around here and starting a brand new timeline of uh, my driver career mode. Um, over the years I've sort of kept it to the same storyline. I think that came to a nice conclusion at the end of the Jordan GP career. Uh, last year on F1 2020. Now, I wanted to do something a little bit different to everybody else uh, who's doing my team and breaking point. Uh, of course, I'm doing breaking point, but the driver career mode, I want to see how different it is. I haven't played it since 2019, so that is what we are going to be doing. So let's have a little look. And uh, yes, we are going to be skipping straight to F1. So uh, we can start from the beginning. You can do the real season start. Uh, which, you know, would be quite fun, uh, in a way. Maybe we'll do that in the future sometime. But uh, we are going to start from the beginning. And uh, looking at this, you can do a full season or a custom season. Of course, the, the three uh, new tracks for the F1 game uh, with Imola uh, and Jeddah and, uh, of course, Portimao as well. Uh, neither of them are, are in there yet so the full season looks kind of weird because you start at Bahrain and then you go to Spain. Uh, looking at the, the custom settings it is going to be a full immersive career mode and by that I mean we are going to be uh, having the full simulation settings on there. We're going to have uh, rules and flags on strict, park Fermi of course on on, um, the weather and time we're going to have that on approximate. Uh, simulation settings I'm going to start with 92 AI, see how we get on with that. Realistic surface type uh, flashbacks. I'm going to limit myself to uh, just medium for now. Um, car damage simulation, car damage rate simulation, low fuel mode hard, race starts manual, collisions on, and of course, tire temperature, surface, and carcass. Uh, career settings, we are going to turn off. R&D management. That is going to be managed by the team and that's what's going to make it so much more challenging I think to progress through this career mode is by turning that off and, and hopefully leaving everything on else on default will make it feel like a real F1 season. So fault frequency, we're going to have that on standard. And the fault types, of course, we're going to have on high, which means everything is on the table. We've got mechanical failures, we've got technical faults as well. So all of that is there. And then if we have a look at the assists, that's what I go with. Uh, I don't claim to be the best at this game, as I always say. I just like to have fun, but I want it to be as immersive as possible. Have the full qualifying format. And uh, for now, we will have it on medium race length of 25% and we'll see how that goes but uh, without further ado let's get into the first career mode let's create your and uh, I'll see you guys when we have created our character and selected our team and here we are ready and raring to go then with our teammate Fernando Alonso here at Alpine so let's advance towards the team headquarters and we'll have a little scout around the main menu, of course, uh, because we're not going to be focusing on R&D, uh, 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 we can have a look, but we can't do anything about it. We can't uh, invest in these things. It is up to the team to do that. So uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how that works, seeing how we uh, progress as a team and hopefully move up from that midfield and get competitive with the likes of Aston Martin and so on throughout the season but uh, there is uh, the vehicle components we'll keep an eye on them throughout the season i'm assuming once they get past 50 percent maybe they can just blow straight away i mean maybe you can just have random faults that would be awesome if that was to be the case but uh yeah really looking forward to it let's head towards the car reveal and find out what on earth the alpine car is gonna look like this year i wonder There it is. She is a beauty, the Alpine. I do like it. 
I do like the sound of the Alpine as well, so looking forward to, to driving with that this year. So let's have a little look at the messages, season objectives, somewhere in the middle of the field. Though, well, that's, that's very, very precise. Uh, welcome to the team, kind of regards from the racing director. Uh, facility upgrades. Okay. I mean, again, I, I don't think I can, I can do that, so... Um, that's up to the team. So hopefully they will upgrade their facilities as we go on. But uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into Bahrain practice. Station. It should have everything you need to track development throughout the season. I'm Ben. Anything R&D, I'm the person to talk to. Oh, and it's tradition for the team to go out for a bite to eat at the end of the race weekend, if you're interested. Do well, and it's all on me. Uh, that's a new guy, I'm fairly sure, which is nice, and uh, you can see, yeah, we have got a welcome from Ben there. Uh, we've got some tutorials, developments completed, so they seem, wow, they seem to have put a lot of new developments on the car. We will have a little look in a second. Um, let's have a little little gander then at the R&D in progress. So yes, they have got a couple in progress at the moment. Which is good to see. So, yeah, that will work, I think. I think that will definitely work. Certainly seem slower than the rest of the cars, though, in terms of development. So maybe we're just going to drop to the back of the field. Uh, but we'll see. Let's uh, head to the next session. We'll see what uh, the practice sessions have to offer us this year. Hello, folks, and welcome to Paddock Pass, your pre-race edition for this, the inaugural round of the 2021 Formula One World Championship. And I've got to say, it feels great to be back. As is tradition, there is something of an air of a first day back at school on arrival here. But it's more than that. It's a breath of fresh air. It's an element of normality in what has at times felt to be something of an abnormal world. Now, we were supposed to have a raft of new regulations this season, but as we know, they've been held back. Which does give all of these teams the opportunity to have a second bite at the cherry. One final chance to show what they can do in this era of Formula One, but the responsibility for results, as always, falls on the drivers. But with the cars at their disposal this year being very similar to the cars they had at their disposal last year, succeed, and they, of course, will put it all on themselves as a display of their innate skills and abilities. But the knife cuts both ways, because if they fail to succeed, there's absolutely nowhere for them to hide. The other question, though, remains as to which of these teams has been able to do the incredible, the impossible perhaps, with these regulations and pull something out of the hat over the winter that gives them the march on their rivals. As always, we can't wait for this season to begin, but for now, from us, that's your life. Okay, that was really cool. Wasn't expecting that, but here we are, ready for practice then. And uh, as always, this game just looks amazing and uh, can't wait to, to see what we've got in, in first practice. Of course, it's not really a representative session, this one, because it's in the daytime, whereas obviously qualifying in the race is at night, but we will see. This first race of the season is always quite difficult for us trackside and for those back at the factory as well, as it's the first time the car has run since winter testing. The more consistent mileage you can get in these sessions, the happier we'll be. Okay, awesome. So uh, I'll see you guys for, for Q1 unless uh, anything else crazy happens. We'll just have a little look at this screen. So this is the, the, the new uh, sort of practice session screen. So you've got race strategy, tyre management and qualifying pace now uh, as your three go-tos. And of course I'll fiddle with the car setup a little bit as well. So hopefully everything will work out fabulously and uh, we can see... If we manage to beat Fernando Alonso, I'm not expecting too much early on. I'm not putting too much pressure on myself. Get out Q1 would be fantastic uh, and maybe score some points on debut. But uh, it's going to be a long uh, career. We're going to see if we can get to the top, if we can uh, change teams quite a lot. I, I, want, uh, I want to experience new teams that I've never raced for before and see what the world is around us. So I'll see you guys for Q1. Unless something else very big happens. Here we are then for qualifying and uh, hopefully 
we will be able to get through to Q2. I've been really struggling with the setup all weekend. I think we may struggle to get through to Q2, but we will try our best and, and uh, hopefully we will manage to, to get a good flying lap in. Let's get out there very early in the session, see if we can get ourselves a, a, a nice early time. We'll make sure there's uh, barely any fuel in the car. I'm going with a, a more sort of top speed setup than anything else, but uh, let's see how we get on. Here we go then, let's take you on a flying lap of this Bahrain International Circuit in our Alpine Renault. Decent first sector so far. So coming up towards turn four. And we come round. Oh yeah, just a little bit wide, so unfortunately, an invalidated lap time. Well, here we are on the penultimate straight then, and hopefully as we break down into the final corner, we come out of the final corner nicely, and we come up to the line. What's it going to be? It's a 128.9, which puts us 14th at the moment still a little bit left on the table I think especially because these are our first set of tyres which I've now done two laps but hopefully we will be alright and we can gain even more time I mean we're three tenths up in this first sector and that's on these old tyres so I do think there is Definitely time to be found. Well, here we go then. This is our do or die lap. How are we going to do? Already a tenth down as we come towards turn one, so that is to do with the exit into the final corner, and that is not good. So might be okay. Only a tenth down at the moment. Well, you can see we are nearly three tenths up. Mr. Saturday is just behind us, Mr. George Russell. And now we come up to the line. Three tenths up. Where's it going to put us? As we come up to the line, 14th place. And that should be good enough to get through to Q2. We shall find out. Let's see. Yep, 14th place. We'll settle for that. Hamilton uh, quickest. We are five tenths behind Fernando Alonso at the moment. I'm sure um, we will hopefully manage to do better than that at some point. But uh, Lewis Hamilton fastest at the moment. Uh, Sergio Perez quicker than Max Verstappen. But uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get through Q3. It's going to certainly be tough, but uh, we'll give it our best shot. Well, here we come up to the line then on our first flying lap in Q2. It's going to be a 129.2. Uh, we are on our used set of tyres from Q1 just to get ourselves a cycle lap come out towards the end of the session on a fresh set of boots and hopefully we can improve on that time
while this has been an absolutely brilliant lap, I am going to show this in its entirety because look at this as we come up to the line. We're 1.2 seconds quicker. What's it going to be? Oh, where are we? I think P12. P12. And we'll certainly settle for that. I think we may have even out-qualified our teammate Fernando Alonso. We shall see uh, very, very soon if that's the case. And we do. Look at that. Just a tenth and a half, but into the 27s. And we miss out on Q3 by just the tenth of a second. Max Verstappen quickest in Q2. Lewis Hamilton second there. Ricardo and Norris looking very, very racy up there. Uh, but going out in Q2 are Pierre Gasly uh, ourselves. Fernando Alonso, Yuki Tsunoda and Kimi Raikkonen. Let's hand over to uh, Anthony Davidson and David Croft for the first time this season. And this 2021 Bahrain Grand Prix. Months of rumour and speculation all come to an end today as we return to racing for the opening event of what promises to be an enthralling season. Welcome along then to round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. There's no shortage of passing opportunities around the 3.36 miles of the Bahrain International Circuit with the best at turn one of course and then another soon into turn four. 15 corners here, 6 to the left and 9 to the right, and we could see one or two flat spots into the tight left-hander of Turn 10. So here we are in 2021 at the start of another Formula One World Championship. It all begins here, Mercedes looking to retain their hold on the title, Red Bull seeking to secure their position as the main contender for that title. Ferrari no doubt hoping for a fresh start following their difficulties last year, and elsewhere on the grid, the prospect of some really exciting battles, including between the newly rebranded Aston Martin and Alpine teams. Lots to discuss then with Anthony Davidson, who's joined me in the commentary box for today's event. It's good to be back, Crofty. Let's hope for some good racing today. We can't know at this point how competitive these teams are relative to each other, but hopefully nobody is able to run and hide. We want to see these drivers pushing to the limit all the way to the chequered flag. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, and it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Verstappen, Perez, Lando Norris and Ricardo, Leclerc, Vettel, Stroll and Carlos Sainz, Gasly, the captain, Fernando Alonso and Sonoda, Raikkonen, Russell, Antonio Giovinazzi and Mick Schumacher, Mazepin and Nicholas Latifi. And now it's time to head down to the track. Okay, so here we are then. And, uh, well, I mean, potentially we start on the uh, medium tyres and, and see how far we can go. I think the soft tyres are and not necessarily going to be the best race tyre possible. Uh, but we, well, we'll see, we'll see. I th yeah, I think that, that'll work quite nicely. Um, and it'll give us some racier tyres towards the end. So let's do that. We'll stick 15 laps worth of fuel in the car. So without further ado, let's get into it. Formation lap, of course. Whoa! Clutch bite is good, gearbox is responding normally. Make sure to warm up the tyres and brakes. Warm the tyres and brakes throughout the lap. So, hopefully we can get everything warmed up. We are going to need to be at our best today. Certainly off the line to have a chance of making up some positions, making sure that we stay in front of Fernando Alonso. Those are the priorities today. Make sure that these tyres are nice and warm. It's going to be such an imperative part of that because 
We're the only one on these soft tyres. Or not on the soft tyres, sorry. Around us. and You know, we've got a chance of some points today. I'm sure there will be a retirement or two. But, uh, obviously no fuel mixes this year. Oh dear. Well, certainly not any faster fuel mixes, so... Gonna have to be a little bit careful and think about the fuel that we take into Grand Prix. I think today will be a good benchmark. Let's keep an eye on the temperatures. Yeah, looking good. Looking very, very good. As we come round this final corner now. And here we go. Lining up on the grid for the very first time in F1 2021 in this career mode. Lewis Hamilton leading the way. Bottas in second. The McLarens fifth and sixth looking very, very good. Both Aston Martins in the top ten. We need to get amongst that as that's going to be where our battle is this year. Carlos Sainz starting in 10th. He'll be disappointed with that. But here we go. Oh, lights out. Away we go. Very, very, very quick release of the lights. And we are caught out massively there. As we were just sort of waiting for our opportunity to go. It's going to be very, very tight into this first corner and with simulation damage on we're not taking it any risks whatsoever. Okay, we've lost a position or three but uh, we've still got our front wing and I suggest that that is a good success. We go round the outside you've taken of Mick Schumacher that was and that's annoying. Bag. So we've took a little bit of damage to the side pods which is very, very annoying, and that was down to Mick Schumacher. But we managed to get back past Fernando. Whoa, that was a big lock up into that corner there. And a bit of an unsettled start here. I tried to undercut Fernando there, but he blocked us off. Yeah, not the best start for us, I think. Now we just need to focus on getting into our rhythm and trying to get some of these positions back. Okay, there appears to be an issue. We're currently investigating. Oh no, we've got an issue apparently, don't know with what. Let's have a little look. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but that would be annoying if we when you are within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. If we have to retire from this race for whatever reason. Especially considering Okay, we have a severe Yeah, well here we go find a safe space to retire or return to the pits. Oh no! We're out! That, oh, that is awful! <laughs> We've had an engine failure in the first race. Well, I mean, can you believe it? That is gutting. Absolutely gutting. And there's nothing we can do about that. We are out. Uh, we've had a mechanical failure. And we are out of the Grand Prix. What a shame. I mean, we were just coming back at Fernando so there as well. What a great race it was. <sighs> Anthony, tell me, what was it that helped them achieve this success? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot. A well-earned victory for Mercedes.
Well, there you go. First race Let's and first mechanical failure. Have changed. Lewis Hamilton takes the lead of the drivers' championship. Let's focus on the driver of the day, Anthony Davidson. Who do you pick? Yuki Tsunoda gets my vote today. Let's move on to the constructors. Mercedes moved to the top of the table. Well, that was certainly an incredible weekend of racing. Be sure to join myself and Ant for more exciting Formula One action soon. Well, we were the only retiree in the end, uh, but what a pity. Uh, I think potentially we could have had some lower end points there. Sonoda and Gasly getting into uh, those sort of positions. We were fighting with them early on, but uh, that's the way it goes. And that's the whole idea of this immersive career mode where we're going to get those sort of problems through the through the air and uh, and that's hopefully going to be reciprocated with other drivers as well uh, we have got meet the press here so I don't know exactly uh, what we're doing but uh, I'm assuming it's clear here we go it looked like you had a few mechanical hiccups during that race just gonna no comment that one when something goes wrong that's entirely out of your control well Here's hoping they're working hard to find some improvements. So there we go, Chris, still there with the the camera. Good old Chris from the F1 2016 days. But there you go, driver claim goes up very slightly, I think. But um, yeah, what a what a pity that we've unlucky had to with retire. the ERS glitch last weekend. We can reduce our chances of similar failures in the future by focusing on upgrades to our powertrain. Okay, so let's have a, a, a little look. Does that... Um, well, no, it doesn't seem to be um, as though any of these have, have broken. Um, our, wow, our gearbox. 80% already. I mean, we're going to have to have a new gearbox, aren't we? It's as simple as that. I guess maybe it was a possible gearbox failure. Um, so, yeah, we are going to have to have that... Uh, five place grid penalty next time out there's just no doubt about that but uh, yes we have got a little season break coming up because of course the, the Spanish Grand Prix is the next one we haven't got Imola or Portimao uh, at this point so it is going to be Spain and then uh, Monaco as the third Grand Prix of the season I mean you know, <laughs> all of these Grand Prix coming up are not necessarily my best until we get to Canada. I think Canada, France, Austria, Britain, Hungary, that is where we're really going to start picking up the points, hopefully. But uh, we shall see how things go uh, and hopefully uh, as we go on through throughout this career mode, we will progress, get points and, and hopefully win races and championships but if you have enjoyed this very first episode of the f1 2021 alpine career then give it a big thumbs up down below subscribe for daily f1 2021 content and i hope you guys are having a wonderful day thanks for watching and goodbye